What's up guys, it's Jane Exotics and welcome back. Shake my hand. How you doing today? Hopefully you're doing well. So, like the title says, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a DIY tank stand with built-in custom tanks. This project took a lot of time and I'm actually really happy the way it came out. I also want to add before we start, please be careful using power tools and use them at your own discretion. If you don't feel safe using it, or like doing a technique that's in here, then don't do it. It's simple as that. You're in control. Hey, before we begin, if you guys like this type of content, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I'll also post my channel link right around here for you guys to go watch more content if you'd like. Thank you. So one night when I was feeding my tree skinks, I looked down at the stand and I knew I was capable of building something better than this. So I sat down, I drew up a plan, made a materials list, and I made sure the project was possible before I started. Once I had a plan, I went out and bought materials the next day at the hardware store. I started making the frame for the stand and the tanks first. I started by cutting 2x3s, which would be the main skeleton of the stand. I cut them using a speed square and a circular saw. I'm cutting the pieces this way because I wanted to do this whole project in a way a lot of people can do it. While guiding the saw against the square, I cut the base pieces, the top pieces, the legs, and the braces for the stand. You can see how square the cuts are coming out right here. Once everything was cut, it was time to start assembling the framing for the tank. First, I laid out my base and the top of the tank. I marked out where I wanted the screws to go, and then I pre-drilled using a countersink bit first. I did this to prevent the wood from splitting, and you can also conceal the screw heads later on. For fasteners, I'm using 3.5 inch construction screws. I used two screws to secure each 2x3. I added braces inside the base and the top for strength. I added extra bracing on the bottom to support the tanks. Once I had the base and the top framed, it was now time to add the legs. Again, I pre-drilled and screwed as I went along. I secured the legs from the bottom of the base, and I also repeated the process for the top. Once the skeleton of the frame was all together, I looked over ensuring it was going to be able to hold the weight of the tank. I added extra legs to ensure the weight of the tank was transferred evenly down to the stand and the stand wouldn't fail. I definitely wanted to make sure it was safe because it was holding up my tree skinks and I'm going to have things living below it. The next two pieces I cut will be attached to the front. These will be an access for the lights later on. Next, I cut the sides and the top of my stand. I'm using quarter inch plywood for the sides and three quarter inch plywood for the top. I wanted to make very accurate straight cuts on the plywood and I'll show you an easy way to do this without a table saw. So first, make sure the plywood is secure and get the measurement you want. After you mark out your line, with the saw off or unplugged, you can measure out the distance from your saw blade to the end of the saw's table. Mark that measurement on the side of the plywood that you're gonna keep. Make sure you don't put that measurement on the side that you're gonna cut off. Now, grab a straight edge. I'm using a 4 foot level, but you can use whatever you want as long as it's straight. Clamp down your guide on the second set of lines you made. Now you can follow along the guide and cut your plywood. It'll be a perfect straight cut every single time. I repeated this process for all of my plywood cuts. When it came down to fasten the sides, I clamped down the plywood in place on the tank. I made sure the edges were flush. I then proceeded to pre-drill and screw down the plywood to the stand. For this I'm using inch and a quarter drywall screws. I chose to give my top piece of plywood a little bit of overhang, but you don't have to do this. You can make your tank as fancy as you want. Now that the plywood is on, I filled in all the countersink holes. I used spackle to fill in all the holes, not wood filler. If you don't sand down wood filler enough, it'll leave a mark. Spackle doesn't do that. Once cured, you have to sand it down.
After I sanded, I finally figured out how I was going to finish off the front of the tank. Again, I'm using quarter inch plywood. I laid the stand down with the quarter inch plywood in front and I traced out all the holes. Now I'm going to demonstrate how you can cut these holes out. You can use a multi-tool and finish the cutoff with a jigsaw, or you can use a skill saw method that we've been doing all video, and I'll show you. I chose to use a skill saw, and I made plunge cuts. Be sure to not overcut and use a skill saw. I then finished off the cuts with a jigsaw. Now, just simply screw the face piece on. This is what the stand looks like with the face piece on. We'll fill these screw holes later. Now, I'm gonna make the tanks. I'm not gonna show myself cutting all the plywood for the tanks just because it's repetitive and it's been the same thing all video. I will show you how to cut the face piece though. I'm using half inch OSB plywood for the tank sides and half inch standard plywood for the face of the tanks. After I cut all the sides for the tank, I just made sure they were gonna fit. After this, I used an eighth inch drill bit to pre-drill holes into the side of the tank. I screw them together using inch and a half trim head screws. I also ran a bead of wood glue down just for extra strength. After I screwed the sides and the base together, I now made the face piece. From the bottom, I measured up 7 inches for my substrate layer. Then around the sides, I measured 1 inch out and this will be for the door. I also cut a small square in the bottom and this will be used so you can see the drainage layer. I then secured the face piece. I used a piece of window screen frame and a 1 inch piece of plywood to mark out where the tops of my tank will be going. I then secured the rips of plywood down to that line that we just made. I used 1 inch screws to secure the plywood. Later on, I'm going to make the tops of the tank out of a window screen kit. Now I used a spackle to fill in all the cracks inside the tank. I gently sand this down once it cures. While the spackle cured, I drilled half inch holes in the face of the tank for ventilation. Later on, I'm going to silicone a screen inside the tank so bugs can't get out of the ventilation holes. Now, it's time to stain. Unfortunately, I didn't film the whole staining process just because my camera died, but staining is very simple. I highly recommend wearing gloves for the staining process. This project took my whole weekend, so I had to bring part of it to work. I'm going to be cutting 1x2 pine boards to make my doors. I cut a quarter inch rabbit cut down the center of the pine boards. This is so the glass can slide right into that cut. I then marked out how long I wanted the pieces to be, and I cut them at a 45 degree angle so I can make a picture frame around the glass. When I get home, I'll be securing these together. Now, I'll be cutting the corner pieces for my tank. I marked out and pre-drilled for the nails. I will be using 1 inch trim nails for this. I then nailed this onto the stand. I stained this piece after it was on. I then marked out and cut the panel for my lights. I will stain this and secure it with the fasteners later on. Now I'm going to be making the tops of the tank. I'm using a window screen kit as I mentioned before. This comes with window screen frame, spline, window screen, and window screen corners. I measured the lengths I needed and cut them with a the multi-tool. The screen corners slide right into the screen frame. I pieced it all together according to size and I added the window screen. To secure the window screen, I used a spline roller and window spline. I gently rolled the spline into the groove in the window screen frame. I'm going to be pre-drawing these now, and so we can secure the lids down later on. Now, I'm using liquid rubber to waterproof the tanks. This process is really messy, so just have a rag handy. Be sure to cover all the areas inside the tank with the liquid rubber. Now, I'm going to stain the rest of the pieces we cut and assemble the doors. First, I clamped down the corners of the door and I pre-drilled them where I wanted the screws to go. Once everything was pre-drilled, I undid the clamps and I added wood glue into the corners. I then clamped them down again and screwed them together using the inch and a half trim head screws. I'm going to stain one side of these doors and use liquid rubber on the other side. Be sure to tape off the glass. After, when everything is dry, I'm going to be running a bead of silicone so it's waterproof and so it holds better. I cut a piece of 1x2 the same size as the 1x8 from before. This will be for the door to access the lights up top. 
First, I screw the 1x2 piece above. This is so hinges can be added later. I use cabinet screws to hold it into place. Next, I went back to silicone the tops of the tanks and put the screen down. I secured it using 1 inch screws into the pre-drilled holes we made before. Now I'm going to add all the hardware to the doors. This will include the hinges and locks. After I screwed the hinges on, I added the piece of leftover 1x2 underneath the doors. I then screwed the latches onto the door and the piece we just added. This will be how the tank latches shot. I then cut plexiglass so we can see the water level and the drainage layer. I used a multi-tool to cut the plexiglass. I silicone the back of this and put it into place. I also silicone the outside of the plexiglass just to be safe. I also silicone the glass inside of the doors. Finally, I cut some window screen to cover the vent holes. I then applied beads of silicone to the screen and placed it into the tank. Here's how the tank looks inside the house. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the way it came out. I won't be doing the tank backgrounds just yet because I need to pick up supplies at the expo we're going to. Just to be safe, I'm going to be adding another coat of liquid rubber and I'm also going to silicone the edges of the tank in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want to subscribe, I'll post my channel here. And if you just want to watch more content, I'll post that right around here. Thank you.